Hey guys, how are you going? This week, as Nikki said yesterday, we're talking about male circumcision. Uh, it's a little bit of a contentious issue in some areas, um, and it's, I think it's going to be very difficult. I've actually decided that for this video, I'm not going to reveal whether I am or if I'm not. Um, but you have to understand that talking about this from a male perspective, um, I'm going to have quite a, a large bias one way or the other. So I'm going to try and weigh up both, um, and we'll see how I go with that. Um, Nikki posted in her, um, in her description a link which kind of weighs up both sides of the argument. It talks about the advocates and the critics. And I actually don't like the link that Nikki posted. I, I think, thanks Nikki for posting it, and I think it's a good read, and I think our viewers should read it. The reason I don't like it, though, is the fact that, personally, I think it's very biased towards the critics. Um, for example, there are some... some passages in there. For example, they talk about the ethics and it says that the advocates for male circumcision, they don't talk about this. Pretty sure that the advocates for male circumcision would talk about the ethics. Um, so I would definitely love to know the sources. Um, I mean, off the top of my head, and you know, if I were to say that I were advocating for male circumcision and the ethics, we would say that it should be pro-choice but perhaps pro-choice of the family or the parents or whatever. There's, all, there's definitely going to be ethics involved. Um, whether or not I personally am for it or not, though, how to answer this without incriminating myself. Um, I have been with guys who are both cut or uncut or circumcised and, or uncircumcised. Um, and you know what? When I was younger, I used to have a huge preference for one way or the, the other. Um, Definitely, definitely had a preference, and to the point of I would almost, um, you know, say no to a guy if he didn't fit my preference. And, you know, I soon realised that that was absolutely stupid, because it makes no difference. I mean, there are differences. There are some differences. Um, but I don't think that when it comes down to practicality, you look at the evidence, and the advocates will say one thing, and the critics will say another... It's been shown that in some parts of the world it helps reduce HIV transmission. In other parts of the world it helps reduce, you know, chlamydia and all sorts of things. There are studies done to show that it helps reduce penile cancer. You know, there's all of these different things. But that one study, if you take it to another part of the world, it doesn't stick. And, you know, it is very much by demographic and by the way that they do things and whatever else. So... Going from the perspective of, it, you know, a guy who gets with guys, um, I don't think it bothers me at all whether or not a guy would be cut or not. I think the question, though, is a little bit different if I'm talking about whether or not I would have my children circumcised. I love the idea of let them choose, but, you know... Because it is unfair to have a child grow up circumcised if in, later on in li their life that child decides that they don't want to be circumcised. Because um, it's irreversible. But at the same time, if that person could have benefited from the circumcision, I think it's unfair for them to then have to make that decision themselves. You know, everyone wants to be able to make the decision themselves. But no man willingly will go and chop off part of his penis. It's, it, I'm just saying, no one is going to go and do that um, unless there are, you know, real reasons to do it, apart from, you know, oh, I just want to be circumcised. No man is going to do it. So unless, you know, unless you got it done at birth, I think, it, I think it's not going to happen. Um, and so do the benefits outweigh the negatives? I don't know... I don't know. What I do hate, though, is, for example, in this article that Nikki posted yesterday, it talks about people who are not circumcised being normal and being circumcised being not normal. And coming from an inclusive background, whether or not a person is or isn't circumcised, that doesn't change whether a person is normal. We can talk about things like, is it you know, on average, do more people get circumcised or not? And of course, that will change by demographic. Um, but I don't think articles should be, you know, labelling people as normal or not normal based on 
the fact that they're circumcised or not. That, that kind of annoys me a lot. Um, you know, raises questions of what is normal, blah, blah, blah. But so much more than that. I, I just, I don't like it at all. Um, so I'm going to finish up this video now. And I know I've gone absolutely nowhere. And I've tried to step on eggshells both without disclosing whether I am or I'm not. Um, and also people that I have got with. Um, yeah, so I'm going to finish up here. But I, I really like the topic and I really hope that people comment uh, and let us know what they think. Um, and feel free, guys, to share whether or not you are. I didn't want to on video, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I, I don't think it matters. <laughs> Alright, I'll see you guys later. Bye.